the physical pain. So in terms of incorporeal pain, there is nothing that is more painful than the death of a child. Not only that it was a child, it was an only a son. And not only that, he had it when he was much older. Uh, and the chances of having another one were uh, much less. Uh, so uh, that is the, the, you know, the peak of pain, incorporeal pain or emotional pain. And then the Prophet said, in the line, when the Prophet said, ولا نقول إلا ما يرضى ربنا وما يرضي ربنا والله إن بك يا إبراهيم المحزون. This hadith is reported by Bukhari Muslim from Anas that that uh, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when Ibrahim was uh, uh, dying in the process of dying, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم had him in his lap and he said. Uh, <clears throat> the, 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 the eyes shed tears and the heart is grieved, uh, but we say not except what is pleasing to our Lord and uh, most certainly, or by Allah, O Ibrahim, we are saddened. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, we're saddened by your death. So the this is the true meaning of remembrance. It is to remember here. It is not to sit down after the salah and say, SubhanAllah, 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 SubhanAllah. And that is fine. But if this was really uh, true uh, remembrance, it would have made you capable of remembering then when you're afflicted by an affliction of this enormity. Uh, but the person who says, SubhanAllah, 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 with complete heedlessness, would not be able to remember when the, time, when, when the true test of remembrance uh, comes. The same applies to times of ease. And, uh, you know, times of uh, happiness or uh, victory, uh, etc. Uh, when, uh, in the beginning of the Battle of Uhud, in the beginning of the Battle of Uhud, the Kuffar were defeated, you know that. The beginning of the Battle of Uhud, the Kuffar were defeated. So it's reported that Imam Ahmad and his Muslim reports uh, that when this happened, the Prophet وسلم, said to the Sahaba, straighten up your lines behind me. Uh, <clears throat> uh, straighten up your lines behind me <clears throat> so that I uh, show gratefulness to my Lord. Stawu hatta uthniya ala Rabbi. Stawu hatta uthniya ala. Rabbi. So, and that, that is when you need to remember also. And sometimes the people have a harder time remembering in good times times of celebration and victory and happiness and so on, and then in uh, times of hardship. Uh, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet, إِذَا uh, جَاءَ نَصُرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا فَسَبِّحْ بِحُمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ وَإِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَابًا So when Allah's victory and uh, when Allah's victory uh, uh, comes uh, and the conquest uh, of Mecca uh, takes place or happens uh, and you see people uh, embrace the religion of Allah or enter into the religion of Allah in large crowds, 
Then Sabbah bihamdi rabbika, glorify the praises of your Lord, or exalt the praises of your Lord, wastaghfirhu, and seek his forgiveness. Inna hu kana tawaba, he is oft uh, forgiving uh, or repenting. It is, you know, this is, keep in mind that this is his work, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The <clears throat> fat and the victory was the you know his twenty uh, one years of hard work coming to fruition. Uh, it is his work. It uh, uh, in one way, but it is the right time. <clears throat> To deny yourself the fadl of this, the, the bounty, and attribute it only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a reminder that it is all in the hands of Allah. Because had the Prophet done all of this work, and Allah did not mean for it to be uh, sort of fulfilled by this victory, no, give da'wah for 950 years, uh, not 21. And at the end, there were only a few people that uh, came onto board with him, on board the, the ship with him. Uh, and the Prophet ﷺ himself said, Some of the Prophets on the Day of Judgment will come, with no one with them, without anyone with them, without any followers. With uh, these are prophets who spent their life giving da'wah and no one uh, responded. So it is all Allah's uh, bounty and Allah's favor. So that is the true meaning of remembrance. If your remembrance that you make, that you utter with your, with your tongue, is contemplative, is true, uh, is coming from the heart, then you will be ready to remember at all times. Remembrance will be there at all times. And remembrance will keep you from uh, evil at all times. She, uh, she, uh, that is Yusuf and uh, the wife of Aziz. Uh, so it says, وَلَقَدْ هَمَّتْ بِهِ Which means, uh, she approached him, uh, sexually approached him, وَهَمَّ بِهَا and he would have approached him, uh, approached her, uh, had he not seen the sign from his Lord, Burhan Rabbi, a sign from his Lord. So that Burhan Rabbi, you know, the, the interpreters have, the commentators have much to say about Burhan Rabbi, but it is obvious and you don't need to particularly believe that it was a particular sign. It is the piety in your heart. It is the remembrance. It is to remember Allah at this point. Uh, and that remembrance came to him so vivid as if he's seen it. Uh, so that's why the expression ra, he saw the proof from his Lord. That proof from his Lord could be basically be his remembrance. He remembered his Lord. So it was a, a proof that prevented him, that kept him from this enormous temptation. 
And that was an enormous temptation because that was a wealthy woman who is uh, extremely beautiful, extremely wealthy, and he was under her control, and he was a young man, and he was far away from his people, and so on and so forth, and no one knows about him. No one knows who he is, no one knows about him. Uh, so it is extreme temptation. But that remembrance, because he was a true zakir. He, when he remembered Allah before, he truly remembered it. It came in to help him, to save him from this, uh, the, you know, trial. So it will come to you at times of trials, it will come to you at times of celebration, it will come to you at times of hardship, uh, if your remembrance is true remembrance. So the Prophet would encourage Muslims to remember their Lord as uh, much uh, one of the hadith here, that's so here is the second paragraph, and that's page 67, uh, by saying to them, uh, the Mufridun, uh, Mufradun or Mufridun, you probably want to correct it. Uh, Mufridun or Mufradun and Mufarridun is less eloquent. It is Mufridun or Mufradun. He has it Mufarradun. It is Mufridun. So Mufridun means those who single out. The Mufridun have preceded. The Mufridun have won the race, the Prophet said. And the Sahaba asked, who are al Mufridun? Al Mufrid comes from Fard. Fard means what? One, single, a single one, single individual, Fard. So Mufrid means the one who singles out. So he said, al Mufridun have preceded or have won the race. And then the Sabaq al Mufridun, and then the Sahaba asked him, Who are al Mufridun? And then the Prophet said, The Zakirun Allah Kathira was Zakira. Those men and women who remember Allah much. Uh, those men and women who remember Allah much. So, what, what does al Mufridun mean here? Uh, it, it means the ones whose remembrance of Allah made them have no one else uh, in this life but Him. So they lived a life with Him alone. Uh, now that does not mean that you are going to be negligent or reckless or indifferent to people, but it means that in terms of uh, watching, you're not watching the people, you're watching him. Uh, in terms of true bond, the str your strongest bond will be with him. For that bond, you forsake any other bond. And for no bond will you forsake this bond. That is the meaning of al Mufridun. He lived a life of solitude with him. Azzawajal, exalted is he. The Prophet also said, uh, This is a Mathal al Allah, or Allah, la Allah, ka Mathal al Hayy wal Mayyit. The example of the person who remembers his Lord. And the person who does not remember him is that of the living and the dead. Uh, the one who does not remember his Lord is dead. And the one who remembers him is alive. The Prophet ﷺ also said to a man, let your tongue remain moist with the remembrance of Allah. In fact, this man came to the Prophet ﷺ and said to him, Inna al -Islami qad 
the, the rituals of Islam have become too many for me. So tell me of something that I would adhere to. Uh, so the Prophet said to him, لا يزال لسانك رطبا من ذكر الله Let your tongue remain moist with the remembrance of Allah. Because this is the me, the, the, the goal, objective. Even the, the, your salah, the salah, the objective of salah is to remember Allah, to be more aware of Him, cognizant of Him, conscious of Him, more in His presence, to feel His presence. So the, the remembrance of Allah is the objective of all the others. So if you have to hold on to one thing, hold on to this. Uh, that does not mean that you're exempt from the obligations and so on, but in t terms of the supererogatory acts, good deeds and so on, if you have to hold on to one thing, hold on to this. And that is the meaning of uh, the other hadith that is reported by, uh, oh, that is from Abu Darda, reported by Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi from Abu Darda, radiallahu anhu, in which he said that the Prophet said, أَلَا أُنْبِئُكُمْ بِخَيْرِ أَعْمَالِكُمْ وَأَزْكَاهَا عِنْدَ مَلِيكِكُمْ وَأَرْفَعَيْهَا فِي دَرَجَاتِكُمْ وَخَيْرٌ لَكُمْ مِنْ إِنْفَاقِ الذَّهَبِ وَالْوَرِقِ وَخَيْرٌ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنْ تَلْقَوْا عَدُوَّكُمْ فَيَضْرِبُوا رِقَابَكُمْ وَتَضْرِبُوا رِقَابَهُمْ قال وما ذاك رسول الله قال ذكر الله ألا أنبئكم Should I not tell you? بخير أعمالكم of the best of your deeds وأزكاها عند مليككم in the most purified in the sight of your uh, Lord وأرفعها في درجاتكم in the most elevating in your ranks or rankings وخير لكم من إنفاق الذهب والورق and better for you than spending gold and silver uh, in charity وَخَيْرُ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنْ تَلْقَوْ عَدُوَّكُمْ and better for you than to confront your enemy فَتَضْرِبُوا رِقَابَهُمْ وَيَضْرِبُوا رِقَابَكُمْ and you smite at the necks of each other uh, or you, you kill each other and then they said what is it O Messenger of Allah he said ذِكْرُ الله the remembrance of Allah it's uh, a sound hadith reported by Abu Dawood and Tirmizi from Abid Darda. So the, uh, but the, the one thing that we also should, uh, that we should glean from this hadith is, could this be, subhanAllah, 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 that is better than all of this? It, it would be impossible, right? Could just be better than all of this? Uh, it is impossible. It is the true remembrance of Allah, which subhanAllah is part of it. But subhanAllah, that's coming out of your heart, and not just your tongue. Because that's subhanAllah that's coming out of your heart, that Allah Akbar that's coming out of your heart, will fix your life. Will, uh, will keep you on track for your entire life. Now, having uh, said all that, uh, it, it will continue to talk about, you know, the tasbih and tahmeel and tahleel and takbir and so on. We have gone over that. Uh, then the last paragraph here under this uh, topic, he says, before teaching others about the importance of remembering Allah, the Prophet ﷺ first set a good example himself, remembering Allah at all times and on all occasions. And when he uh, would remember Allah, he would do so with a fearful, attentive, and observant heart. A heart that was filled with the emotions of fear, love, and hope. A heart that ardently 
desire achieving the good pleasure of Allah. Uh, and the remembrance of Allah is, uh, is an issue that Muslims do not disagree over. But how do you remember Allah uh, is what people could disagree over sometimes. And the, the best thing that you want to remember all the time is that the Prophet ﷺ was the best role model in the best conditions at all times, in all circumstances. The forms of remembrance that he uttered, that we received by being reported from him, are the most pleasing to Allah. Why would Allah, why would Allah grant you a form of remembrance that is better than what he granted the Prophet it, would it make sense? Why would you need to make up any form of remembrance? Whether in its essence or its attributes, you know, time, location, uh, number, etc. That is one thing. The other thing is, do you really think that the Prophet ﷺ fell short uh, in remembrance that you need to do more, so that you need to make up, you know, certain forms of remembrance. Uh, in fact, if you uh, observe all of the remembrance of the Prophet ﷺ, I try to do this for a week, <laughs> and, and uh, see if he can continue. Uh, and the books are available, the, uh, you know, authentic uh, Athkar of the Prophet the book of Al Athkar by Imam Nawi, for instance, and Wab al Sayyid, Hasan al Muslim, you have Hasan al Muslim. And keep in mind that as long as you do not specify a number or location, you can, you can increase, you can say, add more, you can say more. There is no problem as long as it is not specified, as long as you don't tell the people. So the Prophet says, you know, he says, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Ma'at Marra, 100 times in the morning, in the Adhkar al-Sabah. Don't tell the people 150. Tell them 100, like he said. But what if someone said it 300 times? That's good. That's fine. But you don't preach it. You don't tell the people 300. Why not 400? Why not 350? So if someone tells you, why 100? The answer is, the Prophet said so. That's it. So, the, it is twofold. One, don't think that you will be given anything that's better than what Isa was given. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> was given. Number two, don't think that you will be able even to come close to what he did. Uh,